Hey there, it's Susan. I'm here to explain the process behind the painting of this landscape with a blue sky and clouds that I did for our June Paint With Me challenge. And if you wanna find out more about the challenge, it's in the description below this video. The reason that I chose this blue sky with white clouds for the challenge is because it's what we're working on inside of the Paint With Me community this month in June. And if you wanna find out more about the Paint With Me community because you want some guidance on painting blue skies with white clouds, then check out the link in the description below. So if you don't want to hear me chat about my process, then please go ahead and mute this video and listen to your own music and just watch this time lapse, I guess. But if you do want to hear a few notes about the approach that I, I used for this painting, then uh, keep listening and I'll share it with you as best I can in this 10 minutes that we have here. So this painting was actually in real time about 40 minutes and the size of this is an eight by 10. And the whole purpose of the challenge this month is to encourage people to paint a little bit larger. Now eight by 10 is not that large, but it is large if you've been practicing smaller, like five by sevens. And even just doing an exercise where you paint this once as a five by seven and then paint it again as an eight by 10, or perhaps even bigger, like an 11 by 14, then you really start to feel the difference when the scale changes. So that's the purpose of the challenge this month for us inside of the community. So it's something that I personally have been wanting to work on, which is, you know, painting bigger. And so I thought it would be a fun way to practice and see how it feels to paint this small, which is what we did together in the community. So all of us painted this as a five by seven and then scale it up to a larger size and see how it feels and the different things that we notice or the amount of detail that we end up putting in, what changes when we change the scale and how does it look when we've painted it again um, just larger. And so that was the point of this challenge. And so this is actually my second time painting this painting. The first time was smaller. And I have a couple of things to share in terms of techniques and what I used to paint this. So it doesn't matter if you're painting this small or big, uh, the techniques pretty much stay the same. So first of all, I do do a wet on wet approach that I've been really loving. And again, is a personal thing of mine that I'm exploring. Obviously, you can just tape the borders of this, wet the paper, and then do wet on wet. But what I've done that's a little bit different is wet both sides of the paper. And so the paper is just stuck to this acrylic panel. It doesn't have any tape. It's just completely soaked. It's something that I learned from taking watercolor classes from people that I admire. And I've just returned to trying this again in the past year. And it's something that I really love. And so I'm continuing to explore. And I think that it'll stay for a while as long as, you know, the 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 approach works for that painting sometimes you know you start wet, wet on dry and um then you you would just tape down your your painting but for something like this for clouds i typically will start wet on wet and this is a perfect approach for wet on wet so again wet on wet is the first technique that i always use for clouds and when the paper is wet i then lay in the color i use negative painting around the clouds because there's a large area of clouds here so lifting all of that white would it make sense so i just negative paint up to the edge of where i'd like the clouds to be and that goes for the small card clouds as well as the large clouds and then i will do a variation of lifting like lifting with a paper towel or lifting with a brush and then i go back to wet on wet for the shadows so the shadows are dropped in wet on wet and so it's just a combination of those techniques that bring me to what the clouds look like here. So in, you know, in all self critiques, I always self critique myself <laughs> and, um, it could be done more loose in my opinion. It's what I aspire to, but we are all on a journey and we all have, you know, a moment in time where we're our capacity and experience level only allows us to do so much. And I'm at a point where, 
you know, I'm, I'm painting looser than I was before, but it's not quite as loose as where I'd want to be, but I'm, you know, I'm happy with where I am now and I'm still learning. So it's just me sharing with you transparently how I feel about this painting. And I think the clouds could be looser. They are maybe a little bit overworked. Um, and, and the foreground, actually the, I mean, the landscape part is also a little bit overworked or turned out a little bit overworked. And that's, you know, that's okay. I, I mean, I, I still think overall it's a nice painting, but I have my own critiques about it uh, that I wish I had done better. And that's very normal. And as long as I think all of it, all of us just respect that it's part of the process and don't beat ourselves up about it. It keeps things fun. It keeps things feeling light and it should feel that way. You know, I think approaching our paintings with a curious mind is such a nice way to approach it. Like, what? Well, why didn't that, that work out? Or maybe I should have tried it like this next time, you know? And uh, not being so hard on ourselves, like this didn't turn out well and, and therefore I'm a bad watercolor painter or I've regressed or, you know, telling ourselves those stories and making something that didn't turn out mean more than it does, you know, it doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't have to mean that we're all of a sudden not making progress or that we're all of a sudden going backwards in our, our progress. It doesn't mean that it's just means that it's part of our, it's part of our progress. It's part of the practice that's going to get us to where we want to be. So, um, like I said, I really think I overworked <laughs> this grove of trees that I am now painting. You can find the reference photo. I forgot to mention before. You can find the reference photo in the description below this video if you want to paint this with me or paint along. It's in there. Uh, the colors that I use will all be in the description below. So um, with the landscape, I will say that um, I used a lot of the same techniques. Besides, there isn't quite as much negative painting, I would say, but there's definitely a lot of wet on wet. And there is this thing that I love about using this technique where I am wetting both sides of the paper and letting it stick. And this is going to happen even if you're even if you're taping down your paper, okay? There is a sweet spot when the paper is starting to dry. It's, you know, it's not super wet anymore. It's working its way to getting more dry. It's kind of got this matte um, feel to it. And when you start to paint on it, wet on wet, the paint doesn't run away as much as it does when it's fully wet. It's still wet on wet, but it, the paint is easier to control. And so you get these really soft blooms and you can add these details in that have really soft edges. And it's just such a beautiful time to add those details. And I really, really love working on paper when it's like that. And I think and this is just a, a strange little theory I have. When I use this technique of wetting both sides of the paper, I feel like I can get that sweet spot better. Oh, it, it's just more likely to happen, number one, and it lasts longer. And I, I don't know if it's because the fibers are soaked all the way through or what it is. Lifting tends to happen better. I don't know what it is, but there's just a little bit of magic that happens there that I am chasing. And that's why I keep using this method of uh, wetting both sides and then painting on it. So I just thought I'd share that as a note as you're watching me add just the final details here uh, to the painting. So these last few strokes I'm adding in, which you know, really just adds to the overwork that's happening here. Um, it's just to add movement and a little bit more detail to the landscape. I don't know if I needed to, but I, I did it. And I just wanted to add here at the very end, uh, something that I think people wonder if you can do, and you definitely can, because people in my community have asked me is, can you come back and fix things, right? When the paper is dried and this is how you would do it. So if the paper and, or that part of your painting is completely dry, you can sort of push what I call the reset button, which is you're just adding another layer on top. So you're wetting over the area that you 
add, want to add to. So you saw that I just added clear water and now I can continue doing some wet on wet effects. And all I'm trying to do here is add a little bit of shadow back um, underneath that white cloud and add a little bit of color to the horizon. And you can do it and it still looks like it's part of, it was part of the first layer. And, and it's a beautiful way to come back and fix things. A lot of people think you can't fix it once it's dry, but you can. You can just come back and layer over it. I hope that you got something from watching my process and listening to a few of my notes, however random they might have sounded. Thank you so much for following along and I'll see you in the next video.